innovative ideas oftentimes have a component or a kind of sophisticated quality of irrationality or irresponsibility. And if you're going to make yourself attractive in modern day times, you're going to have to have this innovative quality about you that teeter totters alongside the proclivity to be responsible and irresponsible. Now, if anybody that is watching this video has seen any of my other videos, you would know that I'm well attuned to and advocate for discipline, sophistication, charm, charisma, competence, not necessarily in these in those orders, but physical, spiritual, emotional health is by far the most important thing to get right in your life. Whether you are quote unquote attractive or not. But something that I've come to realize since I was nearly 200 pounds at one point, and I'm five foot six and a half, so I was a pretty hefty boy. And I hardly had any women looking my way at one point. And I had such a profound, profoundly stupid way of looking at love and romance and all of these things in regard to relationship. What I really was was naive. I was believing the lie that we were told growing up. I was believing the lie that women wanted the nice guy and women were going to be loyal no matter what and all men have to do is just make enough money to where you can provide and that'll be good enough. <laughs> That's a bunch of load of shit. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it other than that. There's no other simple way to put it. And here's the thing what happens when you actually become attractive. You put yourself at your mental point of origin. Now, I've mentioned this in other videos as well, but what this really means is that you are focused on yourself. You don't necessarily... Now, as a, as a man, you don't need anyone else, necessarily. You, you need people on your team, for sure. Like, you, you need people in your, in your corner. You know, if you're fighting a fight in a boxing match, you're going to need a trainer. You're going to need people to cheer you on in some sense and to be supportive of you when you're knocked down. But as a woman, like you, you, if you want to be a real woman in today's society, you need a man. And a lot of the times women don't like hearing that, <laughs> but, and it's not to say that like you're less of a person for needing a man. It's not that at all. A man cannot be a man until he doesn't need a woman, but a woman cannot be a woman until she realizes that she needs a man. And that's something that a lot of the times we don't want to address in our society. But, but, but this is really something I want to hit on in this video is as a man, when you are filtering out more women than waiting around for your chance to be with them, that's a sign that you're on the right track in, in your romantic uh, senses and in your romantic consciousness. Because that's when you realize that you're actually becoming more valuable in the sexual marketplace. And when you ask yourself what the difference is between each of these women, rather than just believing that she's the one, <laughs> you know, you have to ask yourself as a man, what's the difference between this one and that one? Because when you're able to optimize your choice and your maneuverability, because that's really the most important thing as a man. If you cannot maneuver, you don't really have a lot of power. And if you can't walk away, you don't really have a lot of power. I can't tell you how many times in the past few months, specifically, because that's, I guess, since like June, since like June, where I've, I've, I've had to walk away from more women than I could have ever had the possibility to interact with 
ever before that. I, I And I'm not saying this to boast or anything like that because I, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to keep walking away from these women, but at the end of the day, life is a competition. Make no mistake. And as godly men, if you're a godly man watching this, it is, it is our responsibility to populate the earth with children that are going to be able to have morals, have integrity, that are going to actually build and create and propagate a society in which is aligned with God's will. Because a lot of the times in this day and age, it is just not the case that <laughs> that men and, and women, because as a woman, you have to ask yourself this as well. It, ask, ask what's different about these men that you're dealing with. Like, what are they building? What are they striving for? It's really important. I understand that women care more about a man's future than his past. And I understand that men, men care more about a woman's past than a woman's future. However, I think, and, I, and I'm not a dating coach. I want to also let that disclosure be made. I'm just giving my perspective on the outlook and the, the perception of this bird's eye view of the, the dating market, I suppose. Because I've had a lot of experiences within the last couple of years since I've lost all of the weight, since I've made myself into a person that I can actually be confident in and that I can actually be proud of. It's not that I'm I'm overly prideful of who I am, but I've gone through the pain over the past few years of building myself into this person, and I'm not anywhere near where I want to be, but I'm on the right track. And I know that I'm on the right track because I'm getting the results that I always knew I was capable of and yet I also understand that it's very important to know how to market oneself. The more the more I grow as a as a man, the more I understand that it's it's not just about having something of value to give because it is important to have something of value to give and a lot of times people don't even get to that point. But you also need to learn how to market what you're providing to give. And that's something that can be kind of tricky because somebody like Frederick Nietzsche, who was among the most brilliant people that ever walked this earth, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Jordan Peterson even says that in the Beyond Good and Evil book that he has, every sentence is a truth bomb. And he answers questions that you didn't even think about. You didn't even think about these questions and he's already giving you the answers to these questions. And same with Carl Jung in a sense. But they their their messages were as philosophers and psychologists weren't exactly um sexy. They weren't exactly l like lustful ideas that would grasp everybody because they were talking about truth and responsibility and taking accountability for oneself and really going through hell to get to the other side. And on the other side, well, what's that other side? It's, it's a transformation of consciousness. And so a lot of the times your attraction level is not always based off of your physical looks. Like I know a lot of men complain about that, like, well, I'm not the most attractive guy. And and I did in the past as well. I didn't, I never considered myself to be very attractive. And I would still say that like on a scale of one to 10, I'm like a six, like I'm not the most attractive person out there, but I know that I take care of myself. And I know that I am at a point in my life where my inner strength and my inner stability is at an all time high. And that's far more attractive. And I know how to talk to women too. Like I know how to, I know how to talk to women. 
I love talking to women, real women. That is, I love talking to real women and I love talking to real men. Like I've never been around higher up level people, you could say, and then not like me. Like it, I almost get along better with those people because a lot of, and I'm not saying that like, it's more along the lines of, how do I say this? It's more along the lines of, I just fit in better with people that have a greater understanding of the world and what it's really about and what we're striving to really do. And that's part of the reason why I'm making this video is to encourage you that, you know, of course, like people are going to get upset when you start to make yourself more attractive. Some of the people in your past are going to get upset because now you're, they, their egos are acting as if you're making them look bad. But after all of that work and all that energy and all that time that you put into bettering yourself, now you realize that you're worth whatever you earn. It's not necessarily about, oh, you're worth it. Like you're just worth it. That's not, that's not the way to look at it. And a lot of the times women these days think that just bringing themselves is going to be enough to, to keep the man around. Yeah, you're going to be able to keep a beta male around, but that alpha male that you can't control, that you really want to, but the fact that he you can't control him is part of the what turns you on about him. <laughs> that's like that's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with women you're you're going to have to realize that you you're only worth what you earn and it's not necessarily the case that we as men are looking for you to have a great career <laughs> true godly men want someone that is capable of being a mother at the end of the day that's what we want we want someone that's going to be capable of being a mom I don't want my woman to have to work. I don't want her to have to do that. I, I really don't like the idea of having my woman work while the baby's getting taken care of, or like somebody else raising our child. I don't like that idea in any way, shape, or form because I've seen what happens to, to children that are you know, my mom used to work at a daycare and I remember going to see her uh, at work after school sometimes. And this was actually, it was actually during the summer too, at one point that we went to, to see this daycare where the, the parents would drop off their kids uh, for, for, from like eight to five or whatever, from eight to four or whatever it is. And the, the mom would go off and work and then come pick up the child at daycare. And, you know, the whole day, the child is just being taught like this three-year-old, like this three-year-old child is being raised by a stranger effectively. And I don't like that idea. I don't like that idea at all for, for my two to three-year-old child to be raised by someone else. The first few years of my child's life, I want my mom, my like the mother of my mom, I want, I want the mother of my child to have their mom with them. I want their mother to be with them as much as possible. And so one of the reasons why I'm taking full advantage of being single right now and working so much even though it may not seem like the fruit that is being produced is as great as the work may be, it goes back to innovative ideas and creation. You have to think about the long term of these things. Becoming attractive doesn't happen overnight. And it's not just about being attractive. It's about being someone that can bring value. And I don't even like the term high value woman or high value man. I'm not about that. Are you a godly man or are you a godly woman? And what that means is that you are keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. And a lot of the times 
some even some Christians will hear that and cringe. That's oh, keeping the commandments, like like they'll 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 nod their head as if they're going along with it, but inside their eyes, you can see that <laughs> they don't like it. They don't like the idea of being being commanded. Why not? Like, why? Why do you not like that that idea? Why do you not like that idea of being commanded by God to do something? Because you're free to break it. Absolutely, <laughs> you're free to break the commandment. God isn't saying that you have to do this necessarily. He's just saying that if you want to see the kingdom of heaven which is right here if you if you're here if you're really here kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is right here look around you make sure to feel this present moment that's the kingdom of heaven and that can be everlasting in fact in the epic of gilgamesh which is a ancient mesopotamian uh epic and and story about a hero that is half man and half god it's a he's a demigod basically he's got superhuman strength it's among the oldest and ancient stories that we have known to mankind in that in that story there's a point in which gilgamesh tells this this person that he's fighting the, basically Humbaba, which is the devil, at least an equivalent of the devil. He's fighting Humbaba with someone and he says, forget about death. Think only of life. And that's exactly what Jesus means when he says that you'll be granted everlasting life. You'll forget about death. Like you, you, you will and you won't, right? Like, you know, death is inevitable. And part of that knowing death is inevitable, but understanding that your soul will be living on in everything that you do, that's the true connection to the divine. And that's real attractiveness right there because you're able to create things. I've had people, so many people ask me like, how do I find the woman? How do I find the man? How do I find this? How do I find that? <sighs> to be honest with you, I don't think we're going to find it in our society. We're not going to find it. We're, had, we're going to have to create it. And I've mentioned this to people in my consultations. We're going to have to create the relationships that we want because we're not going to find them nowadays. Have you, have you seen society? <laughs> have you seen the craziness out there? And I want to go back to the worth thing, because when you realize that you're worth what you can earn, that's when you understand how to pull people toward happiness and joy, peace and prosperity. It's like your spirit lifts them up to that level. And that's not to say that talent isn't worth anything. You know, for example, I'm never going to be Paul McCartney. I love Paul McCartney so much, but I'm not going to have the kind of musical talent that Paul McCartney has. He is on another transcendental level plane. Okay. He's Paul, he's Paul McCartney for a reason. That's not to say that I can't ins be inspired by him or I can't do anything like create my own music or anything like that, but because I love making my own music, but I also know in my heart that I'm not destined to be a musician. <laughs> like, I love music. I love music. But I'm not destined to be a musician. It's, it's not me. It's not me. And I think, honestly, a lot of the times, attractiveness is ar ar arisen and arises and is created out of Letting the people that are actually talented enough to do the crazy shit, to do the crazy shit, <laughs> like let them do their, let them cook, 
right? That's the whole, like, there's a whole meme about that, like, within the last few years. Like, let him cook. Let her cook. It's like, oh, man, I'm cooking. Effectively, you're you're just being who you are. You're being the person you're set out to be, and you're you're rocking the world right now. So keep doing what you're doing. And you're going to shock these people down the line with how attractive you've made yourself into being. I had a uh, conversation, a couple conversations recently with people that I've known for five or six years now. And short conversations. I've never been super close to them, but I've had several conversations with people recently, just getting reacquainted, catching up a little bit here and there when I see them out and about. And the response was eye-opening for them. Whoa. Wow, you've done that? That's, wow. That's cool. And it's not even anything super impressive. It's just you're progressing in life. Like, that's all it is. You're like, you just are not stopping. And you're not, you're not arrogantly parading yourself around these, these accomplishments, but it's more like you have these accomplishments because of the person that you are, not because of the things that you've tried to do. It's like you, you get your accomplishments by being who you are. Your accomplishments don't make you who you are. And that's the difference. That's the key that you have to understand. That's what makes you attractive. That's what makes you attractive when you really don't care about anybody's approval but God's. You really don't care. And that that's going to win. That's going to be when you shock them. That's going to be when you shock them. And I've seen fear and amazement in these people's eyes. Even like women that once rejected me years ago. Now they see me. I, I've said this in a video like a couple months ago. Uh, there was this one woman that I was really attracted to. I really wanted to be with her. But I was naive at the time. And she rejected me and she was very happy to reject me at the time. She got that ego boost for rejecting me. Years later, she sees me and her jaw literally drops. She's astounded. And I'm not the kind of person to get overly overwhelmed by people looking at me and their jaw dropping. But when that happens, like you take notice of it for sure. And it, and again, I wasn't always this person. I wasn't always this way. I didn't even know this way of living could even like actually be something like I didn't, I didn't even know men could live like this. I knew I've heard stories about the, the alpha male, but you know, not needing to prove anything like, Oh yeah, he doesn't have anything to prove. And that was when I was like 18, just thinking about these things. And I like casually, I wasn't even thinking about it significantly, but I was just, I didn't really care. I didn't really care about my image. I didn't really care about my reputation and to a degree, I still don't. But on the other hand, the only reputation I really care about is my reputation with God and to be able to, and, and, and just my relationship with God. It's not necessarily my reputation. It's my relationship because a reputation and a relationship are different things. But what I really care about now is just making sure that I live the most prosperous life that brings people joy, motivation and inspiration and edification to the best of my ability. And again, I'm not a dating coach. I'm not here to tell you how to how to have sex with a hundred women or whatever. I don't 
that's really just not my, my goal here. And it's not my goal to tell anybody what to do and what they have to do and what they should do. But I will tell you this, that when you make mistakes, you better believe God sees it. And you better believe the consequences of you breaking those commandments will not be tolerated in your soul. You may not see it in your material life just yet, but it will not be tolerated. Because I've seen it and I've been through the pain of making the mistake to see that God God is there, whether we want him to be or not. And so with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.